Hello and welcome back to Easy Data Recovery. Today we have a 6 terabyte 10 head drive with a snapped SATA data connector on it. And you may be wondering, well, what's the head? This is a 4, uh, sorry, 8 head 4 platter head from a uh, broken drive. I think this head is broken as well. And if, you, if that's eight, you can imagine how big 10 is. Now this drive, uh, the customer was storing some software on it and some photos, and uh, the drive stopped working. And while they were troubleshooting it, they actually snapped the connector off. So our first job here is just to get the drive, or get the PCB on there repaired, just so we can start troubleshooting. And uh, once that's done, go ahead and plug it into our professional data recovery tools. Now, for this, we do need a donor, and thankfully, we already have one. We actually keep a, a collection of donor drives here. And this one is a known good drive with a known good PCB. So what we're going to do is swap the BIOS chips over, plug the PCB back into the old drive, plug that into our professional data recovery tools, and then, only then, can we finally start the data recovery. And with that, let's get started. All right, so we're going to start off with our donor here. Now remember, this is a known good drive that we can pull parts from, and that's just why we have it. So we're going to go ahead and remove the PCB from this drive, and the main thing we want with, from both these drives is the BIOS chip right here. We're going to move the BIOS from the patient over there onto the donor right over there. So same process with our patient. We go in, remove those eight screws so we can expose the uh, other side of that PCB. And you can really see just how shredded the uh, connector is right there. It really took a beating. So then we're going to go to our microscope here. All this work is going to require micro soldering, and that means that we do need a microscope to do it, as well as some fairly precise tools. Uh, right at the top here is our BIOS chip there. It's denoted by that U12 there on the board. To the right is the uh, connector that interfaces between the PCB and the head inside the drive. Now this is made of plastic, so if we go in with too much heat, it's going to melt that connection and uh, damage our board, and we really don't want that. Below it is the controller with that thermal pad right there, and it's also fairly fragile, so if we use a little bit too much heat, too much flux, we can risk damaging that as well. So, first step here is going to be removing the BIOS chip, and we're going to start off that process by adding just a little bit of flux to the, uh, the pins here. It's going to make sure that the solder all stays together. And then from there, we're going to apply just a little bit of heat using a, uh, a uh, directional uh, nozzle. So uh, we, we uh, don't risk any other components on this board. And this only needs a few seconds of heat to get it off and uh, melt the solder. So once that's moved from our donor, we're going to go to our patient and repeat the process. A little bit of flux, a little bit of, just a little bit of directional heat. And uh, that uh, BIOS chip is going to come right off. And these BIOS chips are directional. If you notice the dots on them, that indicates which direction they need to be placed on. So we're going to take the patient BIOS chip onto the donor board here, go in with a little bit of heat, just enough to uh, slightly melt the solder. And then once that's done, we're going to go in with our soldering iron and add more solder to each one of these pins here because we want to make sure each of them has a good connection with our board. We don't want uh, to risk any uh, poor connections here. So you can see the uh, board here is looking good. There's no damage to any of the components. The uh, BIOS chip right over here, down there, is working fine. Right there, the controller is going fine. And finally, the uh, connector down there all looks fine, which is exactly what we want for this board. So we're going to reattach it to our drive here, and uh, then go in with our professional data recovery tools to see what this drive tells us, because remember, this is only the first step of the process. We really don't know what's going on with this drive. So we swapped the BIOS chip over, and now we're going to plug in our drive within the donor PCB here and see what behavior we get. All right, that's the last thing I wanted to hear there. We really didn't want to click and drive, but what can you do? This drive is going to need some additional work to uh, get the data off of it. But what we can do is use our professional data recovery tools to uh, try to isolate the problem here. So we're going to go in and start with our testing, and we can see right away that when we give this drive power, it is stuck in busy mode. Normally a drive is only in busy mode for a little bit of time. It powers on, spins up, and then it enters, a, let's call it sort of a standby mode, but this one is stuck in busy. So we're going to wait for it to leave busy mode, and once it does, we're going to go back in 
with our auto detection to see if we can try to get information from this drive and let's see if we can we can so we're going to go in with the utility here and see what we can do uh, for this customer now we're going to have it auto detect the family here again because each drive has a uh, different family essentially it's part of and each of those families operate in a different manner with uh, different firmware different, different specifications and uh, once we have that done we can look at the log information here this is going to give us all the information about the drive all of its various aspects. We confirm we can see the drive identification information. So that's a very good sign there. We can see the number of heads. And main thing is the log here isn't telling us that we have any problems or any uh, glaring problems, I should say, with this drive. It is workable with the tools we have here immediately. So the next thing we're going to do is map the heads. Now it's just going to let us isolate any of these heads if they pose any problems. Say if a head is stuck, if a head uh, is damaged, we're able to basically exclude it from our scan. Thankfully this customer doesn't want an entire image of this drive. They only want some specific information. So we're able to work with the specific heads and platters where that information is located. And we don't have to get an entire image of the drive, which saves the customer some time and money and makes our life just a little bit easier. All right, so there you have it. Even after replacing the PCB on this, we still have some other issues, some clicking, some scraping. Now this drive may have been powered off suddenly and the heads may not have been in park. They may have scraped against something. And uh, we don't know yet because we haven't opened this drive. But thankfully for us, the customer doesn't want a full image, so there's no need to source a donor, do a head replacement, do anything to the platters. Uh, we can just uh, isolate the problem heads and make some firmware modifications to get what this customer needs. Questions, please ask in the comments, and we really hope this video was informative.